adopt a code of conduct, even if it's a joke, you're still adopting a code of conduct, which means you're giving in, which means you are legitimizing the process. This is going to be an unscripted rant. I want to discuss codes of conduct in software projects. For the past decade or so, there has been a pretty serious influx of rainbow-haired freak bugs into software, more specifically into open source software, although they've infiltrated large companies as well. Uh, traditionally, we've referred to the kind of people I'm talking about as social justice warriors or feminists in some cases, although arguably many of them are not feminists. But the truth is that the only real common thread among them, um, two things, is that they have a uh, strong bias towards leftism and they have some kind of social justice bent to them some kind of authoritarian identitarianism. Um, several of them are trans people, but not remotely all of them. There are quite a few people that are just crazy. Um, notably, uh, a lot of them are not people who actually get a lot of things done, so much as stir a lot of pudding. Um, and some of them can get a lot of things done, but the problem is they get a lot of things done while taking over projects. The code of conduct thing kind of sprung up, God, I don't remember the year, but the most notable incident I can think of was where, what was that project called? Um, Coraline Ada MKE, -E -E, is the person who is responsible for this. There was a project, I think it was called Opals, a bug report or issue report was filed saying uh, remove transphobic maintainer from project or something to that effect. The guy who maintained it, I say guy, but we don't even know who it is, they, uh, they were an anonymous person with a question mark suit guy for an avatar, uh, but this was on GitHub and the anonymous person who maintained this repo was like, uh, no they contribute, uh, you don't, and all I care about is the code. And the thread grew enormous. One of the things that came out of this thread, however, was Coraline Ada Emke telling the person, ah, oh, here's my contribution to software. Here is my code of conduct that you can adopt in your project to avoid these problems in the future. Now, it's been a while since I've reviewed this, but um, the details still kind of exist in my adult little autistic brain. And one of those details is that this code of conduct that was suggested was absolutely ripe for a form of abuse known as rules lawyering. Now, what is rules lawyering? Well, if you have any kind of system, uh, be it a game, uh, an organization, uh, anything with any sort of interactions between people, you have to have some kind of rules, <coughs> spoken or unspoken, for how those people will behave. Traditionally, the way that people would behave when they're collaborating on any kind of project, anything that was either business or smelled businessy, like, you know, a software project, is uh, what we would typically refer to as professional conduct. That's it. You either were professional or you weren't professional. Professionalism was a pretty well-defined standard. You know, you're not unnecessarily rude to people. You attempt to be diplomatic. Uh, it's okay to put your foot down, but you have to do so in a way that is not too aggressive or hostile. Um, you... There's, there's certain standards of conduct that have been around for a very, very long time as to how professional people treat each other. Now, where this gets into the code of conduct thing is if you just have professionalism as a standard, well, a lot of people don't need to be told what professionalism is. It essentially boils down to don't be a dick and think about other people before you go off. And it, it's really just being polite. It, it's polite society stuff. But 
the code of conduct thing is an attempt to introduce a formal set of rules that are vaguely written, but that don't, like, because they're vaguely written, they don't really specify the exact way in which someone has to behave, or the exact, be like, punishment or censure that must be levied upon someone who violates the rules. Now, this, this code of conduct thing, by formalizing these intentionally vague, which means easily reinterpreted to mean whatever you want, but on their face sounding noble rules, like, uh, for example, don't be a dick, what does that actually mean? What constitutes a dick under such rules? You know, <clears throat> what kind of behavior violates a rule like don't say things that make other people uncomfortable? Well, are you going to enumerate every single possible thing that could make someone uncomfortable? No. And a rule like that is, in fact, untenable because what makes someone uncomfortable is extremely subjective. It's very personal. What offends me? What offends you? What offends a freaky rainbow-haired social justice lunatic bug? Those are all very different standards. The standard changes depending on who is interpreting it. So what happens is they get rules like these codes of conduct put into place that they sound noble, like all we're trying to do is make sure everybody feels included. We're trying to make sure people feel welcome. We want to allow people to contribute and feel safe. Ironically, having such a code of conduct that is vague and easily abused, along with the kind of people that will maximally abuse it, makes something the opposite of safe, welcoming, and inclusive. But I digress, or do I? So under the premise that establishing these formal rules so that everybody who contributes feels safe and feels like their contributions are welcome and, like, uh, and that if someone misbehaves, then we know that they will be censured in some way to punish them for their misbehavior. Well, this all sounds very noble because at, fundamentally all people have this notion of justice. <clears throat> they have this idea of professionalism. When you interact with someone else, you want to know that the person you're interacting with is consenting to the interaction, is comfortable with the interaction, it, it, and that it's positive in both directions, because otherwise what's the point of collaborating on something if you're not benefiting? Now, in a project, any kind of like software project or an organizational project, any kind of project, you have a common goal. And even if there's conflict between people in a project, Ultimately, you can fall back on, <laughs> it sounds so office spacey, but is this good for the company, so to speak? Is this good for the project? And even if your disagreement is a little heated, you know, even if it's strong and you're standing behind it pretty aggressively, like, you're just like, no, this is really bad. If we, if we go this route, it will harm the end goal, which is the success of this project. It will not progress things the way you think it will. You, in a project, you should feel welcome to stand up and say, hey, wait a minute, this, this is actually, I've, I've done my research or, you know, I've thought this through and here's the logical end of that and it's going to be worse than if you don't do that and you do something different. You should be welcome to lay out your case and, and feel like, hey, I've been listened to, everybody's considered it, even if they don't go with it. Okay, I had my moment and I was respected, listened to, considered. That's good enough for me, even if that's not what they decide. <clears throat> this is professional conduct. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, and sometimes things can get heated, but there are ways that you deal with that. If two people start getting in a pretty heated argument, you split them up, calm them down, and you figure out, hey, you know, why were you mad? Why were they mad? You know, what set you off? And how can we, how can we bring you back together from, from this heat? And you can continue to work together and be okay. What these codes of conduct do is they essentially hack the professionalism system. They take the notions of professionalism and respect <clears throat> good behavior, you know, consideration, 
and uh, welcomeness to all ideas, and they use that very system to basically take power from the people that run it by getting them to adopt noble-sounding but vague rules, then being very aggressive about the interpretation of those rules in a way that favors them. They basically usurp power by establishing bullshit rules that people who are running things thought sounded good because if I say, for example, I want all people to feel welcome to contribute to my project, that might mean a different thing than one of these activist trans people that have infiltrated a lot of open source projects saying, I want people to feel welcome when they, when they contribute to this project. What they mean is not that they want all people to feel welcome. They really mean, I want all people who agree with me to feel welcome. I want all people to agree with me. People who agree with me are welcome. My way or the highway. If you disagree with me, you're harming me. You're abusing me. You're, you're questioning my identity. Oh, you're, then you're being disrespectful and so on. Now, <clears throat> just because somebody says something that they don't like doesn't mean that they've actually violated the spirit of those rules in that code of conduct. But that's the way they use it. It's called rules lawyering. You aggressively advocate against the spirit of the rules using the letter of the rules. So if something says everybody needs to feel included, well, feeling included is very subjective. And how far can you claim a lack of feeling of welcomeness and inclusion and get whatever you want that way? This is how codes of conduct hacked the system of professional conduct between people trying to get things done that has existed and succeeded for a very, very long time in the vast majority of cultures that uh, we consider so-called first world that the most successful cultures are cultures where people can collaborate pretty comfortably and not feel like some psychopath is going to cost them their job or destroy everything they've worked to create. But they've hacked the system to where they can run things. And they run things by getting vague rules adopted and co-opting them. So this needs to... Um, this needs to be brought uh, into the GitHub domain because GitHub is by far the number one most popular uh, open source collaboration platform in the world. Everybody, including me, in general, uses GitHub. If they don't use GitHub, they use GitLab or something else, but the vast majority of people, even if they use other options, are still familiar with GitHub. <coughs> and as a result, GitHub is a really big deal. Now what has happened is this Coraline Ada Emke person got hired by GitHub after a bunch of feminazis that got into GitHub and made a big stink and claimed that they were being abused because they were women, and they, it turned out they were lying, of course, got the meritocracy mat thrown out, so to speak, and I can't give a full history of this. Um, I don't remember the name of the lady, but it was one of those weird hyphenated names. Um, that worked there claimed discrimination because woman and ended up getting the whole meritocracy thing thrown out because somehow meritocracy is, is anti-woman or anti-black or something um, because I don't know. I mean, the implication is that women can't do anything. But um, anyway, I don't remember the woman's name, but the bottom line is that she got the whole concept of meritocracy that GitHub was founded on thrown out. Um, and that was the beginning of the end. Then they hired Coraline Ada Emke, the uh, trans person that was um, behind the whole code of conduct thing um, at, in that thread for Opal, um, pushing that code of conduct really hard, which by the way, it has become the code of conduct GitHub tries to shove down your throat, the contributor covenant, um, which is directly related to the to-do group open code of conduct. Uh, all of which used to have in their earlier revisions lines saying 
we prioritize marginalized people's safety over privileged people's comfort. And you can look that up yourself if you want to see all that wackiness. But here's the problem. When Coraline became part of GitHub, Coraline managed to get this code of conduct stuff shoved in. GitHub you know, basically leaned, bent over backwards for this crazy person um, to do what they wanted. I mean, they hired this lunatic. They let this lunatic like basically make the rules that gave them power. Ultimately, Coraline Ada MK was fired from GitHub because this individual was so intolerable and annoying and just unprofessional and everybody ended up not liking them. They were so bad that GitHub, which became woke as shit and passed all the, you know, pushed this code of conduct on people and adopted it as their own official corporate code of conduct and everything, ended up firing them because they were that bad of a person. Just nobody could stand to be around them. So, had to go, had to go. And sure enough, <clears throat> you know, even though this person was gone, they kept the wokeism around. They kept this bogus code of conduct around. So, we're coming full circle to the point that I wanted to make originally, but you needed all the backstory to really get there. More recently, I was reading a thread on, I believe it was lulz.com. Yes, literally L-U-L-Z.com. I don't even know much about the site, but there are interesting things that come up on it occasionally, so I like to read them. One of them was talking about trans people taking over projects and how they'll basically bully any project into getting trans people on, you know, somehow to get into power and then kick out all the people that disagree with them. And if your project says, no, I refuse to let you take over my project, they'll call you racist, transphobe, whatever, until nobody uses your project for fear of being cancel cultured. <clears throat> so here's where that discussion went, ultimately. They started, there was a serious discussion between at least two people about software development. And like, how can I avoid this sort of virus from taking over my project. If I want to make a piece of software, put it out there, and I just want people to be able to use my software and be a part of it without all this political crap. What do I do to keep these rainbow-haired bugs from infesting my open source project like all these others that have been slaughtered over the years by these crazy, crazy people that try to co-opt all power for themselves? And the discussion mentioned codes of conduct, and that's where we are today, codes of conduct. Now, I put some thought into this because originally what I thought I would do when GitHub started shoveling this code of conduct thing as some kind of measure of whether or not your project, like you, if you don't have a code of conduct, GitHub considers your project to not be good enough. Like it's, it's not... You know, your project isn't complete. There's some sort of thing in the settings for the project repo that says that, like, your project status is, like, not done. You need to, it's like finish filling out your profile type stuff. It's like normally you would have a readme and a license so people know what it's about and know the legal terms of use. But now, on par with those two things are also a code of conduct, something you don't need. Now, here's what I thought I would do. I spent a lot of time on this. What if I adopt a code of conduct that's either a joke or an explicit refutation of the code of conduct crap? Because I know who puts these codes of conduct in place. I know why they want them in place. I know that if they're in place, these psychopathic people then suddenly have some armaments to try and come after you uh, to try and steal your project from you. If your project gets big enough and you have a board instead of an individual, not everybody's necessarily going to be as resolute against letting psychos take over the project as you are. Not everybody will share your vision of not fucking your project into the ground. So my initial thought was something like NCOC, the no code of conduct, which basically says, like, you don't need a code of conduct, don't be a dick. <clears throat> and for a few days... I actually was poking around at various anti-codes of conduct because my thought was if I put up an anti-code of conduct, it shows openly, I am protesting codes of conduct. 
but here's the problem, and this is why I think no open source project should adopt a code of conduct, and if they have, they need to get rid of it immediately. If your open source project adopts a code of conduct, even a joke code of conduct, even an anti-code of conduct, even a I am actively protesting the concept of a code of conduct, code of conduct, then you're still giving in. You're still ceding ground to the freaky rainbow-haired bugs that are infesting software. You are giving in. Simply by adopting an anti-code of conduct, you are still adopting a code of conduct. You are still doing what they want. Not only that, but you're outright declaring, I am anti-you. Please target me, daddy. Target me harder. Target my, my internet anus a little harder, daddy. I need, I need my rainbow-haired bug trans daddy mommy to get over here and wreck my software booty hole to the point that nobody wants to use my project or contribute to it because all you do all day is argue about transphobia, blah, 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 blah. And that's ultimately the problem. If you adopt a code of conduct, even if it's a joke, you're still adopting a code of conduct, which means you're giving in, which means you are legitimizing the process. Ergo, none of my projects that I have on GitHub, none of the software that I create, that I control, that I publish anywhere, will ever have a code of conduct. Not even as a joke, not even as a protest, none of it. Because if I accept the concept of a code of conduct, I am accepting at least the fundamental premise that these rainbow-haired bugs put out there that I have to have a code of conduct or else. And I won't do it. The best form of protesting this kind of stuff is to simply not allow it to influence what you do. Do what you do, and if they come knocking at your door saying, you need a code of conduct because transphobia, or you need a code of conduct because people won't feel welcome or included or whatever, shut it down. You don't have a discussion. You don't make your stand there and protest. You delete the GitHub issue, or you lock it without discussion, because it is not a discussion. You are the dictator. It is your project. It's your baby. It is the thing that you have put your blood, sweat, and tears into. It is a product of weeks, months, maybe even years of your life. And not for a second should you even remotely dignify any of these psychopaths with a response. You shut them down and you shut them down hard. If you don't say anything, they can't claim that you said anything. You shut it down without comment, that's the end of it. There is no discussion. You don't like it? Start your own fucking project. Alrighty, that's about it. I hope that this has been informative. I really want you to leave comments telling me what you think. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. And enjoy your life of not being soiled by these psychopaths digging into your hard work and destroying it. Take care.